1971, the Alice Cooper Band released what are, in my opinion, two of their best albums ever, and they were called uh, Lover to Death and Killer. After that, they released another album in 1972 called uh, Schools Out. This album had their biggest hit ever called Schools Out, but the problem was that the rest of the album was not that good. I mean, there are a few good tracks here and there, but the title track was probably the best one, nothing in comparison to uh, these two albums here. Now, a year later in 1973, they kind of had this challenge of making an album that will bring back the glory of those two classic albums I just mentioned. An album that's classic front to back where every song is memorable and captures the essence of the band. And I think they pulled it off with the next album called Billion Dollar Babies. This album was released on February 25th, 1973, celebrating its 50th anniversary. Let's talk about it now. One of the best albums from the Alice Cooper Band. This album was a success and it was uh, their best-selling album thus far. At this point in the band's career, their live show was very theatrical and pretty wild. They have Alice in a guillotine, baby dolls, dentist drills, hatchets, and so many other props. These will tie into many of the songs I will talk about. To this day, it's one of the albums with songs that are played live on a regular basis. The album was very influential. Some of the artists that have credited the album as being their favorites are Chris Cornell and David Byrne. David Byrne actually said this album was an inspiration for his song Psycho Killer. Also one of the Alice Cooper albums that I used to listen to when I was a teenager. I bought this one just because that green cover uh, stood out out of all of his 70s albums. And the ones I listened to back then were Love It to Death, Billion Dollar Babies, and Welcome to My Nightmare. So let's talk about the songs. The album opens with Hello Hooray, a cover song originally written by Rolf Kempf. This version by the Alice Cooper Band is very theatrical. The way he sings it, it seems like he's getting ready to go on stage and he's getting the audience ready to see him. It's a typical 70s rock and roll song and it really uh, sets the tone for the album. The song also works as a theatrical song because the main instruments are the piano and the bass guitar. Alice Cooper usually has more guitar-oriented uh, songs. The end of the song also takes on that signature creepy tone that Alice Cooper likes to have in a song, something uh, that makes each song stand out. The next song I will call um, R Word and Freezing. I cannot say the title on YouTube um, because they might put a restriction on my ad revenue, but it's a straightforward classic rock song. It has an upbeat feel, it has a bouncy rhythm, the kind of song you can sing along to. One of those songs where their signature guitar sound and the bass guitar stands out. You know, like it does in most of his other songs. It's interesting because in, in the lyrics, he finds a girl, he crosses the border, and then he ends up in Mexico. And he ends up stranded there with no clothes. Um, at least that's my interpretation of the song. There's a song, Elected, a remake uh, that was on their 1969 debut, uh, Pretty's For You. Um, the original song was called Reflected. This is a classic Alice Cooper song. It has that bouncy rhythm the hard rock guitar, and the overall theatrical feel to it. The song is very relevant to this day, 50 years later, because it talks about how politicians promise you everything. And then once they get into office, they do whatever they want. It's funny, he says that in the lyrics, if he gets elected, he's going to start a third party called the Wild Party. But in the end, once he gets elected, he just says he doesn't care. Next is the title track, uh, Billion Dollar Babies. Uh, it's very interesting because... It's a duet with Donovan, who just happened to be recording in the same studio as Alice. Alice invited him to do some vocals on the track, and you might not notice it at first because Alex likes to do different voices, but if you listen closely, you can hear it's two people. I thought it was interesting because I just learned that not too long ago, just watching um, a video that was made by another YouTuber, uh, Chris Profi. He talked about that, and what's interesting is because I've been listening to this album for over 30 years, and I never noticed it until he pointed it out. So it's an interesting tidbit. Unfinished Sweet is probably one of the only rock songs about going to the dentist. It's an interesting song because the main concept is about eating a lot of candy and getting cavities and going to the dentist, something that's common to, to almost everybody. This was one of my favorite songs when I first bought this album. I thought the introduction was very uh, psychedelic. I like those sounds, but I also like... It was a hard rock song. It was one of those songs that set the stage for, you know, 70s and 80s hard rock. You know, something like a band uh, Kiss would do. 
And maybe one of those first uh, hard rock songs to use a drill. I may be wrong about that, but it's very cool. And also cool, they do this like James Bond kind of guitar riff in the middle of the song. It, they do this trippy interlude in the middle and it fades out and brings back the main melody. So one of my favorite Alice Cooper songs that uh, doesn't get talked about a lot. Then No More Mr. Nice Guy was one of the singles. It's a hard rocker. It was covered by Megadeth for the Shocker soundtrack in the early 90s. The song was based on some of the reactions to his live act by his mother's uh, church group. So he decided to write a song about it. This was uh, the biggest hit from that album. It's an example of Alice Cooper writing a catchy, uh, short, hard rock song when I was very influential to other bands in the future. And Generation Landslide is another interesting song. Musically, it reminds me of a 60s rock song, but the lyrics are very interesting. They talk about how generations are different, and it's also interesting. They actually mention the name Billion Dollar Babies in the lyrics, and not just the title track. But I think the song is how people never expected these normal guys to form a band and become very successful in a short period of time. I really like the song. It's a little different, a little more laid back. It's got a cool harmonica solo and a really good album cut. And then Sick Things is an interesting song. It's a slow, sludgy kind of song, but it has this epic quality to it. There are a lot of theatrical elements. It's also one of my favorites from when I first bought the album because it was so different. The kind of track you can just imagine the Alice Cooper stage show doing all these weird things on stage. I think that's why I like that song. Marianne is a strange song because it's a theatrical piano song and seems to be a love song, but then the last line is, uh, Marianne, I thought you were my man. Kind of takes the song in a different direction. I can't really say what I think about it because you're not allowed to talk about that without getting in trouble. But I think it's kind of obvious. It's also interesting. It's a two-minute song. The song has two verses, and the, the two verses are in the first minute. Then the second half of the song is just an instrumental piano. And then I Love the Dead is a song about necrophilia, but it's done very tongue-in-cheek, or shall I say, in Alice Cooper kind of way. A song that captures the essence of Alice Cooper. It has that spooky atmosphere and a dark theme, but it's done in such a way that it seems very theatrical and appropriate for a stage show and that's something that the Alice Cooper band did very well at that time so that's all let me know your thoughts on billion dollar babies please remember like comment subscribe check out my other anniversary reviews here's a playlist of um 2023 anniversary reviews these are all classic album reviews so be sure you check that out and that's all see you in the next one